This is supposed to be the portion of the show. We're in the news, what gets analyzed. How about this? We hadn't mentioned this in a while. And it should always be of some interest. What in the hell is going on when one person is talking and other groups of people are listening? And they can do things besides talk. But anytime you have a dance going on, it seems to be, that is, between somebody in front of an audience. And on a minor level, it can happen, of course, between two people. But let's say what appears to be, well, hell, come to think about it, here's an example. Me staying here talking, and you people sitting there listening. It's all a form of one of two things. You're either being entertained, and it can be up to the audience. It doesn't have to be limited to whoever's doing the talking to establish. They can say, well, I'm here to, I'm a comedian, for instance. It's one of the old jokes go. A guy can come out and say, hello, I'm your comedian for the night. My name is Paul, and I'm your comedian for the night. And the audience hollers, we'll be the judge of that. <laughs> so just because a man says it, just because he's advertised. But what I want you to consider that if an arrangement is already set up, there's someone on stage, a performer, and there's an audience. From some view somewhere, it either is for the purpose of being informed or being entertained. And that covers everything. We could split up other ways, but it's really of no... I can't see any significance to cut it any finer than that. That you would think, well, I am here where you showed up. And the person doing it might be thinking a similar thing or they might be thinking another version. But the point is, let's look at it from your view, from an audience's view, you are somewhere and you're either being entertained or you're being informed. Classic examples being you're out at a nightclub or at a symphony and it just seems to be entertainment. And that would be if you're at a lecture, you're in college, that you're being informed. Then if you put them both together and you cut out the classifications, exactly what in the hell is going on? You know? Again, it just comes to mind, we could use this current situation, Vincent situation as an example, that there you sit, and if that gets a little too antsy, imagine that later you might be sitting out at a club or at a symphony or at a lecture, and you sit there. For what purpose? Why does there seem to be such a division? All right, let's go back to the division. That always makes it sound better because if you say, well, here's a subject let's talk about, but first, let's consider that it operates in two distinct ways. You already feel more relieved <laughs> before you even hear what it is because you think, well, now we, you know, somebody's cut the pie. <laughs> well, now we've got somewhere. There's somewhere to put your finger in the... <laughs> how would, well, how would anything... How about religion? Would religion get anywhere if there was just one thing about religion? I mean, just figuring out one of the most popular forms of combined entertainment and education. Would it get anywhere if there's just one thing? Those places would be as empty, as crazy as it is <clears throat> since chapter 11. I think in his case, it's now chapter 12 and a half. Why does there seem to be a distinction between being informed about something and being entertained? And why is it that if you turn to somebody and said, uh, a friend, you said, what will we do tonight? And they said, I don't know, what, what would you like to do? And you went, well, there is a lecture on Italian opera, 18th century, going on down at Tilly Millie Hall tonight. And the person goes, Jesus. <laughs> you know, I, th I thought you meant like go to a movie or something. You know, who wants to sit there and listen to that and then they can describe from their view something stuffy about dead Mediterranean <laughs> lyricists and musicologists, musicians. They can say that, but what they're really distinguishing is, well, I wanted to be entertained tonight. I did not want to be informed. I didn't want to have to put up with one more time now, they will describe it like, well, I don't want to have to go somewhere and sit. Probably have to dress up. You can't laugh and you can't throw milk duds at 
<laughs> girls on the front row. You know, you can't hoop and holler. And I bet there'll be hardly any fights or you know, car chases in the lecture. <laughs> well, after those rhetorical questions, then let's do refine it. As I started out, when you're sitting around with yourself, you're going through the same process. When you're talking to yourself, or even if you'd like to expand a little bit, if you're sitting there alone at home and flipping through the TV, how about that? Or even just decide to read. What do you pick up? Are you going to pick up you know, Playboy, Vogue? Or do you decide you look around and pick up a book on philosophy or you know, physics? But if you can see it inside of your own brain, you do it when you talk to yourself. You do it during the normal operations of the intellect. What do you call daydreaming? Of course, you're ordinary. What do you call the intellectual process? <laughs> well, even ordinary people, if we tried to make a distinction, as I'm doing now, if we were talking to an ordinary, sane person and said, do you realize that your normal intellectual processes you're aware of the fact your mind's running all the time. And once they got past the shock, are you serious? And you go, well, think about it a second. You know, can you think about times it doesn't run? And then being this, as I said, intellectual, same people are, they'd go, my God, you're right. Many people can realize that if you point out to them, some people before the age of 50 even. <clears throat> so once we had that established, that the person, that your mind is always operating, it's operating in such a way that if you took you know, occasion to listen to it and thought, my mind's operating. And they went, wait a minute, I'm only 39 and this is all new to me, let me think. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> that was a little... And if you said, all right, consider when you're just thinking. Your mind's just constantly running. You got that. And they go, well, yeah, but God, what a shock. But yes, all right, you're right, it does. I just never thought about it. Oh, silly me. Then if you said, all right, what if you looked at it, what if I ask you this? What if, what if I ask you and you could answer in a straightforward, non-subjective way, and I said, do you remember at one time in your life deciding, I think that I will think? And they go, well, no. All right, did you remember thinking, I believe that I'll just start thinking, I'll just get my mind going and just, you know, after that, who knows what, as far as I'm concerned, it'll never shut down. It'll just go on forever like some, you know, a movie or something showing. <sighs> That's as soon as they can stand that. And they go, well, all right. And then you said, all right, if, once you realize that, then there is it's nothing that strange. It is almost as though you are a witness to something. If you're aware of the fact that my mind is running all the time, and all you got to do is want to be lucky and be a Sagittarius with green hair, and you can go and turn like this and realize my mind is going all the time, almost like some kind of out of control or non-stop 24 hour a day TV station, radio station, going. Okay, I got you. Then if you could look at it, if you knew how, listen to it without interfering with it. Because of course, the first thing that young people like 40 or 50 years old when they first realize this, the first thing that they do is go, oh, I can hear it. And then they go, wait a minute, I screwed it up. Something happened. And then they look off and they say, how'd you do that to me? And you say, all right, there it is again. They go, oh, you're right. And they go, wait a minute, something happened. So let's assume they get past that point. <laughs> and then you, then you said, all right, it's going on constantly. And they got that. And you said, and you can sort of, if you know how, and if you're lucky and if you're Sagittarius and all that bullshit. If you can turn around and you can listen, it's just going on like that music in the background. It just goes on and on no matter what you do. You can be asleep, you can be drunk, you can be dazed, you can even be a Presbyterian. And it still goes on. And it's just going on. And if you're lucky and you're not a Presbyterian and you're a Sagittarius, you can begin to listen to it. And it still sort of go on. Then the question is, after all that, then the question is, what's going on in your particular mind, your particular radio station? Is it mostly entertainment or is it information? 
Is your station mainly a top 40 station? <laughs> really an oldest station. It's mainly a top 40. It might be that it, it's the top 40 up until the age of, say, 18 or 19 or 20. After that, it's golden oldies for me. The same songs over and over. Is that a song? Is that a song going through my head that I never heard? What the hell are you guys doing up there? <laughs> I'm going insane. I'm, I'm hearing songs that I don't like. Hey, stop that. That's a new song. What the hell is that? That's some that kind of new kind of song stuff. Stop that. <laughs> so, let's assume that this person, they do, they get it down that, yeah, you're right. That music going on, my mind is all the time talking. Sending out broadcasts. It's just going on. It does not stop. If it stops, and anyone knew it, of course you wouldn't know it, but if anybody did know it, uh, you'll be treated as being ill because it's not supposed to stop. So the person says, all right, I got you. You're right. It's going on. I can hear the music. It talks to me. Now, what was your question? I asked you, take some time to note Is it entertainment? Is it an oldie station? Or is it like you've picked up PBS? You know, public radio, and they're giving out information. They're having little courses on, you know, all sorts of subjects. Just something informative. Which is it? Now, that's when it becomes interesting. Because this, you're going to spend your life somewhere if you're not a hermit. But it is of some passing interest. It shouldn't take you over a few minutes or do it a couple of times to consider what it is anytime you go to be entertained. We've been through some examples of this. It is all the way from going to hear a priest, a rabbi, to hear a comedian, to see a football game. If you go out and you place yourself in the position of an audience and go, here I am, then it's one of the two. You're there to be informed that you want to learn something you think. Or the person says that they're going to teach you something and you accept it. It's you know, some combination of the two. And it can shift, of course, while you sit there with that. It's either that or you just simply go in to be entertained, like to go see a comedian, to go out and have a few drinks and hear a comedian, or go out to a, if you're a little more high class, to go out to a nude bar and have a few drinks and watch naked women or men dance. And if you suddenly jumped into somebody sitting there and went, are you here to be informed? You know, they'd figure out, that, and what are you drinking? Because you're weirder than they are. They're obviously not there to be informed. And so when it gets to a certain point, it's not that hard to describe because I just did it if it's hard to describe that there is a there is a discreet line between the two but as I was asking a few minutes earlier is there really such a line and beyond the manifestation of it being out there in ordinary life it's what's going on in one's own brain and if I push this along a certain line just I wasn't going there but you might get some out of it yourself. This could almost sound as though it was on the verge of being some sort of sermon to say, all right, here's the point, boys and girls, men and women, is that you have a mind and the thing always goes on and you should not be wasting it with just daydreams and gibberish. You should all the time be trying to think of mathematical formulas that you don't know, <laughs> trying to remember all of Newton's laws of physics and all of the modern variations. And that would sound like a good sermon. And many people would feel guilty. Like, well, you're right. I, you know, now that you mentioned my mind, it, you know, I don't reel in my mind. It just goes on and on. And it's all I can do, to tell you the truth. After a hard day at the office, it's all I can do to sit down, want to relax, have a, a martini, turn on TV, and you're right. And I'll think, well, I'll turn on PBS. There's some kind of good special on tonight. And I'll be flicking through, and there's one of those mindless, witless, so-called comedy shows. And I'll leave it on there, and you're right, and I think, Jesus, I at least ought to turn on, even if it's just a National Geographic, something that might do my mind good. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but see, I'm not going to do that because <laughs> that's not even informative. Just people think it is. That's bad entertainment. <laughs> that's terrible entertainment, but it passes for very important information. But if that's what you want, leave the studio and go to your nearest synagogue or temple or church or something. A financial seminar. 
That'll make even atheist feel guilty. You're right, I, I'm not greedy enough. I've overcome my religious background and I no longer believe in God, but you're right. I don't think about greed enough. I don't try to make enough money. By God, you're right. I'll go out and take my fellow man better tomorrow. See, once you can think, bad information is bad entertainment and vice versa. But that is not, of course, the point, as I bet some of you already imagined. It's not to make you feel bad because the gibberish going on, see, here's the point. If we went along that line, and that seemed to be the end, that this was a lecture tonight of some kind. And I pointed out, and you followed all this, and you went, you're right, our mind operates all the time, as long as we're alive, even asleep. But we'll let that go. Because I'll admit to you, that's, you're pushing it when you start trying to worry about what they play on your radio station at night. <clears throat> Any of you who are really antsy about this, I guess you can check with me later. Now we forget that, it was sort of a joke. It's during the, daytime, during the daytime hours when you're actually, what do they call it, up and around. And your eyes are open, you're not in bed. And the station's going, and you understand that thus far. Then it would be just predictable. What I said we weren't doing is what I'd said thus far is for a person to say, well, you're right, I'm going to spend 60 plus years alive. My mind is going other than eight, or in some people's case, 12 hours a night worth of sleep. But most people, eight hours. And so the rest of the time, I got all this time. What is, 60, what is 70 years times uh, 16 hours a day? What's 365 days? Quick, somebody. What's 365 times 70? I'll make it easy, 70. Okay, and then what's 70 times uh, 16? I mean, what's the... Well, you see. So a person could go, all right, I've got all this time, and my mind's going to be going whether I want to or not. So you're right. Why not use it for something constructive? At least some part of it. I got 16 hours a day that, it's, that I'm awake and it's running. Well, take out eight. I got to work. That my mind belongs to the company store. That I got to do that. All right, that leaves eight. How about that? All right, how about well, let's split it? How about just four? Give four over to mindless entertainment. But that leaves four hours a day, 365 days a year. All right, take Sunday off. For 70 years, and the, and the person, a, a person could say, you're right, I should spend at least that much time doing something constructive with my mind. Do you follow, besides all the little jokes I made, that that would be reasonable. You could you know, announce that you're giving some kind of lecture and do just what I've done without all the little asides, and many people would leave right then feeling sufficiently guilty to think they got their money's worth if you charged them to get in. If you said, just think about it, folks. Especially if I'd gone through what I just did and I think about it and whittle it down from 16 hours a day or, you know, to just point out that, well, right, you've got to work and then you've got eight hours left over that's supposed to be your own free time. But how about this? You, don't, you shouldn't drive yourself nuts, but if you do want to improve yourself in life, and let's assume the audience is all sane, civilized people, and go, well, yes, certainly, that's why we're here. You go, all right, you've got to relax. I mean, there's nothing wrong. Go out and see a basketball game. Well, you know, Drive there and stop and have a drink or something. So four hours. But at least you should spend four hours. Or I could even make it better and say, all right, just two hours. Spend six of your eight hours doing anything. But at least two hours a day. Why not forget reading all that? Just make your mind dwell on something that is more potentially informative, educational, than entertaining. Is that too little that a sane, civilized person should ask themselves, no, it's not, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're glad to have had you here tonight, and good night. And you would have left and thought, well, that was worthwhile. By God, that's something to think about. That, that you, there's no way out. You cannot deny that. That's what we should do. Except, except, boys and girls, here is El Rubbo. They would say that. Very sane Nobel Prize winners, if they were sober. And so you walk outside and they're scratching their head or they're talking to one another like, that is true. I mean, it's so obvious. It, it didn't take a, those kind of people say things like, it wouldn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. Well, educated people know how to turn a cliche. And they'd be outside talking outside the lecture hall like, that is so obvious and I just never thought about it. We're talking about perhaps educated actual rocket scientists, let's say, that I do have to actually put forth brain power at our job because I am not simply a bricklayer or a cab driver. I have to think constantly. But he is right. 
talking about my lecture, this thing outside. And he said, but he is right. Because I, the rest of the time, I go home and it's like, well, phew, boy, I've done all the thinking I want to. And I might put on a little Mozart on the back, on the stereo, and I'll sit there. But I'll pick up a New Yorker. I'll read the paper. I'll flip on TV. I'll watch God knows what. And I could be spending at least some of that free time, like, educating myself. I should be doing that. He was right. You follow. Then what if I jumped in the midst of these people's brain, and I said, all right, you all bought that. I mean, you can't deny it. The more educated you are at the street level, at ordinary level, the less there's any way you could deny it. They even argue with it. And they go, yeah, we can't argue with that. Then I would say, being the smart ass that I might be, say, well, can I ask you this curious question? And here it is, a person, a thinker for a living, a philosopher, a rocket scientist, who has just said, that is so true, what I just lectured them about. And I say, a man of your intelligence, a man of your education, a man of your IQ, yes, 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 yes. How come you never thought of that? I mean, you're 50 years old, you got a room full of prizes and awards and degrees, how come you never thought of that? We're getting to serious er area of certain information is not entertaining to anyone. They would, by, they, would be, be, they would be on the verge of losing all interest in anything I had to say. <laughs> they would decide that perhaps that they were too hasty in pre earlier deciding that I was on to something. To here I'm outside asking them, well, all right, you do agree to all that. Well, yes, I do. I'm glad I came here. I, I've never heard of you before, but by God, I mean, it's pretty obvious. But once you pointed out, you are correct. And I say, and you're 50 years old, and you are that. Dr. So-and-so I've heard about. Yes, yes. Can I just ask you, just no offense, why have you never thought of that? Of course, I will answer why you've never thought about it. Because the mind that operates 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, the one you're born with, cannot think of that. And it cannot do any better. That's the trick. Even when they say, well, you're right about the lecture. That's what I should do. Well, they can say they are, but it's not going to do a damn bit of good. Now they can say, they can in fact behave in a new way. They can go, all right, you can't tell me I can't do that. I'm, I'm going to throw away my TV. When I get home at night after I eat, take a shower, I may have a you know, glass of wine or something. All right, I'll show you. I'm going to sit down. All right, I never had any interest in the arts, says this guy. I was always a science man. I mean, that's the kind of guy I am. <laughs> I'm going to get, I've got some books at home. Well, I got encyclopedias. I'm going to start. And I'm going to thumb through and I'm going to start at architecture, fine art, painting. I'm going to start educating myself in the arts. Of course, all this is now out of hand because just between you and me, then, if this was going anywhere, I'd say, Sir, a couple of minutes ago before I was asked you directly, you had some nonspecific or nonverbal understanding that that's not what we were talking about. Of course, by now it's too late. But you understand, that's not what it's about. It's not ed not educating yourself. Maybe I got too complicated. <laughs> if an ordinary person realized, which you could make them realize, I guess, for a few minutes of no, at no profit to themselves ultimately, that the mind's going on all the time. Why not do something that might be worthwhile? And they go, yes, you're right. That it is literally like a radio station that's going to broadcast the rest of your life. That you can listen to it. It is, in a sense, separate from you. If you know how to do it and you're a Sagittarius and all that bullshit. <laughs> that you can listen to it. There it is. You're right. It goes on all the time. So why not? I mean, it's in my head. Why don't I make it do something that might be a little more profitable at least a few hours a day instead of playing the golden oldies? <laughs> well, to answer the question about why I don't, you know, or their rhetorical or literal question about, well, you're right. Why don't I do it? The answer is you can't. Oh, good night. <laughs> Drive carefully. <laughs> Boy, is that a climax to a lecture? <laughs> Would they not want to hoist me on their shoulders and carry me out of the lecture hall going, rah, rah? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. But see, that is the trick. That is what all of man's arts and sciences, to paraphrase one of the things, the uh, news items tonight, is that all the artifacts, all the manifestations of civilization 
are, and this is not a cheap simile really, but they are like the sweat from man's intellectual discontent. That's what they are. And it can't be otherwise. And so, do you see the connection? The point is, if the same kind of people that would agree to that, go, well, you're right, that all the arts, religion, science, everything is an attempt for man to overcome, for man to transcend what he is, what he now has, the position he's in. And it is ultimately based on the intellect. Even though we have materially done things like build cameras and power stations and rockets, it all arises from here. Without this, there is no technology, there is no machinery, there is no architecture. And so men would say, as they're supposed to, that what I just inferred, or what I just stated, cannot be true, that you can change your mind. You can affect what goes on in your mind. That on a collective level, that statement I just made that you can is unassailable to an ordinary person. To anybody can think, all you got to do is say, we'll try. And they go, God damn, you're right, you can't. Thank you and good night again. <laughs> and of course, an ordinary person can't do that. If they, could do, if they could do the other part, if they could actually listen to the station going on and you said, wouldn't it be nice that don't you just think perhaps you ought to spend some portion of that day since it's your station you're not crazy you don't think it's the voices of God or something no nah, but I understand you're right your brain goes on it's what people call dreams see it seems very distinct amongst many people that at night dreams or you know people write books about it hell people go to lectures they pay somebody interpret my dreams and, and just an aside, some people, some civilized people think the religious people are nuts. Well, they're nothing. Think about people that go to somebody and go, would you interpret my dreams? I didn't think, not many people ever like that. That's why I only mention it once or twice a year. Back to what I was saying, there is no doubt it wouldn't doing good ordinary people, but there is no doubt that you are separate from your mind in case you've got any doubt, in case you think that I'm perhaps playing with metaphors again, because you do know, just let's go back to ordinary views, because it always represents something worthwhile. Ordinary people, you at the ordinary level, to you dreams at night. When you lay down just ordinary dreams, whether you took them as being some mystical subconscious message or not, to you dreams are, it's in your head. I mean, there's no doubt about that. You're the one dreaming. But it's like something out of your control. It's your brain, and neurologically and physiologically and psychologically, they keep trying to interpret it. They have been for four or 5,000 years for a very good reason. <laughs> but they, they try to interpret it like, well, it is your subconscious desires coming out. It is the voices of the gods. It is dead ancestors trying to talk to you. It is space captains from other planets trying to you know, send in. But what does all that say? They're trying to explain the fact that dreams are one time that makes you aware of the fact. If there wasn't a ready explanation, it would make you aware of the fact that, wait a minute, I got a brain in me. I'm more or less sane during the daytime. I'm as sane as anybody else. But I lay down at night and the, this very thing runs on, but there is a distinction between me and it that is without question. I mean, to the point that many times all of you have in a sense, made yourself awaken because the dream was so uncomfortable, was so frightening, so disturbing, that it was in your brain, but it was like, there's no doubt, this is out of my control right now, I've got to stop it. And that, so there has to be explanations. <laughs> what I was trying to get you to take a certain smiling attitude, if not more, toward the fact that people when their dreams interpreted, is, why do you think there's a difference? between that and what's going on now. Now, of course, there is none except what goes on now. People do not think about it as a dream. And you do not feel that you're separate from it. That is, you try to tell somebody if they were a Sagittarius and had green hair and all that, okay? In other words, you understand the poor should be keep doing that as ordinary people can't do it. And yet it seems quite physically, physiologically, neurologically possible. If you tell an ordinary person, you're awake, you're not dreaming, right? Listen, you hear that music going on behind us in the background? Yeah. All right? Your brain goes on all the time. 
Are you talking about like dreams at night? Hey, listen, you stupid twit. Are you listen to me right now? Listen in your head. <gasps> but there cannot be, for the reasons of collective intelligence, for civilization to carry on. An ordinary man cannot walk around with some feeling that there's a part of him, a distinctive part, that is in him that never goes away, and that without any doubt, with nothing weird, nothing neurotic, nothing psychotic, that there's a part of him that he's always accepted as just him, and I got no more control over it than I do my dreams when I eat two pounds of anchovies right before going to bed. <laughs> An ordinary man, what would you do with that? Of course, nothing. There's no point to this. An ordinary person, you can't do it to them. If you did do it to them, you wouldn't be doing them any favor, and et cetera. But that is what all, in a broad sense, that is what all of civilization is about. That's what all of uh, attempts to improve yourself is about, is to improve this. The rest of it is you know, kind of stalling. Like, I'll lose weight, and I'll go to the gym, and I'll take up pumping iron, which is all right. That's a hobby, as good as any. But that is like a stalling tactic to keep from working on this. All of it is. Well, I'll improve my soul. Good. You know, same thing. You know, I'll do anything except work on this. And there's a reason why individually. Because you can't. And ordinary people can't see that because if they went, my God, you're right. They can, right after that, if it stayed with them, they could no longer say, well, I am not psychotic. You know, thanks to you, I am no longer not psychotic. <laughs> so it takes these kind of unusual people, green hair and Sagittarius and etc., to realize that what my ordinary mind, mine and everybody else's, let's assume that yours is as sane and ordinary as anybody else's, that you realize it is it's going on constantly. It's like a station broadcasting it's going on, mine's as good as anybody else's, and we're all trying to improve it. We cannot do it in one lifetime at an ordinary level. People cannot even do it directly. But everyone believes they can, and they believe they can. One of the reasons they can continue with this belief is that nobody tries. Because if you tried, like, well, all right, I'll change my station. Uh, you'll pardon me if I don't hold my breath while you do this. You know, I'd like to live through the weekend. Because an ordinary person can't. And, well, I started to say it's no big secret that people know that. But that doesn't even matter. Because it still doesn't do me any good. But it's like, I can, turn, I can change this station anytime I want to. Which, how can anybody, how could I or you, if we were stupid enough, hard up enough for a hobby, psychotic enough, to try and, con and show people the truth that you cannot? As long as they don't try, you can't prove squat. You know what I mean? Is that too weird? I can make it even more and less. A man can tell you, a sane person, put it all together, a sane, civilized person can tell you. I'll quote him. He says, I don't normally tell people this, but I can fly, literally. I can wave my, well, I'm not going to tell you exactly how, but I can do it. I can, I could jump off that building over there and I can fly. Now, I know that me saying that's the same ordinary person, you go, no, it's not. Yeah, it is. could be the same thing because that is not insanity if they never try. They can say, I can do it, and you can say, well, you're wrong. They go, no, I'm not wrong. You're wrong. I know me. You don't know me. We just met. I can do it. As long as they don't try. One more time now, don't weasel out. Don't let that damn station drag you along like it always does because you can say, well, wait a minute. The person is not rational to start with. They're not ordinary. They wouldn't say that. Come on. Come on. You believe worse at the ordinary <laughs> level. Everybody believes worse. That just sounds like, well, wait a minute. That's obvious. A man can't fly. Think about all the other obvious shit you've always believed, you and everybody else. That's nothing. Well, that's child's play. But you understand the reason I picked out what appears physically to be a silly example. A person says, I can fly physically. If I jump off that building, I can fly. And you go, well, you can't. And they go, well, I'm not going to stand here and argue with somebody of your intelligence, of your lack of it. I'm telling you, I can. 
I can fly. I can fly off that building if I want. If I jumped right now, I could fly off. Don't weasel out. It is, how can you tell a man it's not true if he never tries? People say, I can change what I think. That's, no, that's nothing. What's well, hard is to quit smoking. What's well, hard is to give up chocolate. But you're talking about just in some way, you know, screwing around with your mind or, you know, quit thinking about certain, oh, yeah, I can do that. As long as you don't jump. And we're not talking about individuals any longer. The collective can't jump. That's why they all have to hold hands. That's why the dumb hang out together. That's why a man is by nature gregarious. Because if a man wanders off, he's, he's inclined to get psychotic, which means nothing. Go crazy, which means nothing. He is inclined, just an ordinary man, if he wanders off too far, removes himself from society, from the herd, there is a very strong possibility that he is going to get a little fruity in the head. It just happens. You need the stability of being around the sanity or the insanity, the beliefs, the collective beliefs of everybody else, if you're going to be ordinary. If you're not going to be ordinary, you know, that's open to some question. But as long as a man says, I could change this, which men say collectively, forget individually. Now, they'll say it individually, but it's only for a collective reason. If they say, if they could do all this, which we're playing again as always, if everything was just like it is, and yet I could change it a little bit, and it still say the same, and we'd add this new part, which of course can't be done, but here's what it is. We get this person that I started talking about, my imaginary person. They go, you're right. No big secret, but now that you put it that way, my brain, my mind goes on even when I'm awake. During the daytime, like that music going on back there. You're right. And I guess there is, you must have meant it allegorically, they would say to me, that there is some kind of distinction because you're right when I'm asleep, which has got to be different, but I know what you're saying. When I'm asleep, it's like my brain then goes into a dream state, and it is out of my control. It's obvious. I've read enough that it has to be what I eat, or I could be feeling bad, or maybe the covers are tied up around my foot. And it makes me think that I am falling into a cigar factory. <laughs> or I'm suddenly going into a dark tunnel and up ahead is a picture, this huge face of Siggy Freud. You know, something like that. Just say, I've read all that. But the point is, they, would, they could admit, when I'm asleep and dreaming, which is different than being ordinary awake, it is as though my, that I am a witness to dreams, like my mind. But that, of course, that is completely different. But if you, if you got them that far and they want, yeah, I can see that. And then they want, ha, huh, this has been worthwhile. Saying that to my lecture. Because now I see I could directly go right in there and change this. That's right, sir. You can fly. All you got to do is jump off a building. Really? Yeah, just don't try it. Okay. No problem. No problem ruining, as they say in New York. Same way, I can change my mind. You're talking about directly now. Yeah, now that you put it that way, I could do it, sir. Talking to me. And I said, well... Don't you try it. And they go, well, thanks a lot. Whew. Now I could charge them extra. I could charge them an exit fee. Besides coming into the lecture, if I could take them this far, and they went, you're right. That's all true. And I went, okay, but don't ever try. Then they'd be reaching immediately. You know, how much more was that for me to throw that last part? <laughs> I, could, I could double whatever the entrance fee was, charge them that much to get out That All right, don't ever try. You can do it, but just don't try. Whew. Now, this sounds familiar. I know it, at first it might not. You've been sitting through it all your life. Life tells you the same thing. The collective intelligence, all of man's institutions, tell you the same thing. But with a, just a certain little spin on it. Just, they change it just a little bit. Just a little. But life's been telling you the same thing. All religions... Society, morality, your parents, life. It's been telling you the same thing. Like, you can do it, just don't try. <laughs> we'll worry about it later. Perhaps after you die. <laughs> well, at least sometime. As long as it's not now. Okay? And everybody goes, Phew. How much more am I going to have to pay life for that beautiful message once I go out? Well, since life doesn't collect, he's appointed me. Life has appointed me. It's agent here, so you can simply pay me. Thank you. Good night. <clears throat> Leave it in the box or hand it to me personally.